Losing your job a month before you graduate is obviously not what any senior wants to hear. When I first got laid off, I didn't want to do anything. I didn't feel like applying anywhere. I was just like, I just lost my dream job two weeks before I graduate. I could probably exhale and be like, okay, I did it. I know what my next year is going to look like and like I'm safe. Um, and now I'm, I'm not safe at all. For the past three years in school, I kind of have been balancing school and work. And so I felt like when I, have, when I had that offer, I felt really happy. Like my hard work finally paid off. This is much worse than the Great Recession. Over the entire Great Recession, I think maybe eight and a half, nine million jobs were lost over the course of a five-year period. Between February and April, the United States lost 21 and a half million payroll jobs. And so now people graduating this spring are gonna face the worst job market in the entire post-depression history. You know, when I got the call, I kind of knew why they were calling. A call I had been kind of dreading for a while came, and they basically let me know that, you know, they had to rescind my job offer because of the economic conditions related to coronavirus. I was shocked. I did not know how to react because this has never happened with me. I saw it coming uh, because um, of how the whole situation is. So it was a mix of relief, but also like oh my nightmare is real <laughs> when i got the email my heart like dropped it took me a couple of days to like really um, realize what had happened i didn't tell anyone for a couple of days i kind of just kept it to myself although it was not unexpected it was still very devastating i saw like the notification email from um the ceo and i was like okay there's no reason that i should be getting an email from the ceo and it said urgent please read I, it was just extremely emotionally draining because uh, when you like worked so hard to get a job offer and it all of a sudden gets like taken away it brings back all those memories and that feeling of anxiety of like going through job interviews uh, job hunting receiving all those rejections i remember just being like okay what am i gonna do now well, there was a concept that sociologists were talking about a decade or so ago called failure to launch. People were staying in their parents' households longer or returning to their parents' households. They were delaying when they got married. They were delaying the first birth of children. And many markers of becoming an adult, buying your first home and so forth, were postponed in the generation since... Uh, 2000 or so compared with the years before that. It gets to a point where it's like, okay, but when am I gonna get a job so I can start doing my plans and building towards my goals and you know, eventually get a house and just do everything that I wanted to do. I just turned 22, you know, living with my parents was not kind of my idea for what my life would look like at this point. I had previously planned on living with two of my friends in New York City, they have offers there as well. Yeah, I was ready, I was, you know, going to move out, move away from home soon after graduation. That's no longer the case. What I have uh, after graduation is an OPT visa. So once your visa, the start date begins, you have 90 days to find some sort of employment. I think I'm okay if I have to leave, then I just have to leave knowing that I've tried my best, I guess. You know, I don't qualify for unemployment insurance. Um, I was claimed as a dependent on last year's taxes, so I, I didn't get the $1,200. Yeah, you know, I feel like I kind of slipped in the cracks. I think that economists who've looked into this carefully all agree that there are effects that persist for a long time, if not permanently, for people who graduate and come into the job market uh, at around the time of a deep recession. Even after the recovery occurs, these generations often are scarred by having employment rates that are one to two percentage points lower than those of generations that graduated school in a healthier job market. I've applied to over 100 places. 
I think it's like 118, something like that. I've heard back from maybe a fifth. I honestly did not count. Like I stopped counting because it got depressing. <laughs> so I just feel like right now it's more of like survival mode. So not only am I competing with each person that's graduating this semester or recent graduates, but I'm also competing with other experienced individuals who have also lost their jobs. I've written so many cover letters. Like I just spend so much time um, crafting these applications and sending them off and then getting no response. It's constant like door after door is being shut in my face and it's just so hard to stay motivated during this. Being an international student, it's not just about finding a job. We also have to look into the visa timelines, the job market, uh, the type of job we can work. It's not just we've just lost our jobs, some of us. It's we've lost in-person classes, we've lost seeing our friends, having an in-person graduation. And having a job made me feel some sort of comfort of, oh, at the end of this, like, it'll all be normal. I'll have some, like, steady level of work. But now it's, I'm back in this uncomfortable mode. So I graduated in 2009 from the University of Oregon with a education degree and then a business uh, minor. I graduated from Carnegie Mellon University in 2009. I graduated from law school during 2009. I had zero job prospects. I had had about 10 campus interviews, never got called back for any of them. and had to move back home with my mom in Portland, Oregon. I didn't have a job when I graduated law school and a lot of my friends that had um, offers, they'd been revoked or they'd started. After graduating, you know, I still didn't have a job uh, at graduation. So I think like a lot of people, I moved into my parents' basement for a few months. I never felt like I had any choices. I was so desperate just to be able to you know, take any legal job that paid rent. So graduating during the, the last recession, I think, gave us all some skills that we wouldn't have otherwise had if we'd been graduating in the same economy as when we started law school. Be flexible and open-minded so that you have opportunities that could lead to other opportunities down the road. I wish that I had been more specific with my skill set. So I was so general. I was always like, I have a good attitude. I'm a quick learner. I had all the buzzwords down, right? I wish I could have told myself, find something that you really enjoy and double down on it so that you're an expert on something. Really use all the spare time that you have to go and build things that you find personally interesting that are relevant to the skills that you've developed in school that you want to apply going forward. I think it's better to fall on your face right away than it is to do it, you know, five, ten years in. So with nothing on the table, now I can really consider what do I want to do? Why do I want to do it and seek out those roles? One of my friends said, you know, this could be a blessing in disguise and that's how I'm trying to look at it. We should definitely take this time to just reflect on ourselves and kind of take it as a little vacation time because once we start working, that's it. <laughs> so your know, short term, it's like, you know, get John a job, that would be great. But like on a much more real place, I'd like a better society that takes better care of its people. Focus on the things that you can control. So for me, I've been working out, <laughs> just like lashing out <laughs> all those things into working out. And I think for hiring managers um, to also give people like me an opportunity to even, you know, get through a door <laughs> or even just a doormat. <laughs>